Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U Online Instruction. Hi, we're back again, and we're continuing on with the sequence of lectures uh, in week two of this course called Fundamentals of Atomic Force Microscopy. And in this particular lecture, we'd like to discuss uh, a little bit more the uh, interface that forms when a tip interacts with a substrate. And in this particular uh, lecture, we're going to focus more on the surface energy uh, that characterizes that interaction um, rather than the Hamacher constants uh, that we discussed in the previous lecture. So there's a number of ways to approach this, 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 uh, this physical process of a tip coming in contact with a substrate. We're just trying to go through and remind those of you that may not have a background in, uh, in uh, different areas, uh, these different ways of, of talking about the, the same basic physics uh, and the different disciplines have, have uh, chosen to uh, develop over the years. So this particular lecture is, is focused more on a discussion of surface energies and uh, trying to get you to think about those quantities and how they relate uh, to uh, tip surface interactions. Uh, we'll show that these uh, surface energies are also related to the Hamacher constant. So if you stick with the lectures, that connection should become clear uh, later on. So. Uh, in terms of a broad overview, uh, it's, it's probably worthwhile to, to just mention that there are many different, sur many different surfaces and interfaces that occur in uh, nature, and the physics and chemistry that occur at these interfaces are completely different than the uh, physics and chemistry that occur uh, uh, in bulk materials. Um, it's been said many times that interfaces and surfaces produce uh, a, a huge variety of phenomena that uh, uh, lead to very interesting uh, uh, effects. And uh, experience has shown over the last uh, 30 or 40 years that the physics and chemistry at these surfaces and interfaces are often dominated by defects. Uh, but nonetheless, it's important uh, to be able to distinguish between a surface and an interface, and there's a, a very simple uh, uh, distinction uh, that uh, uh, allows us to talk about uh, either of these two quantities in a rational way. So mostly what we're interested in is we're interested in interfaces because we're mostly interested in how a tip interacts with a substrate. That's a solid-solid uh, type interaction, so that technically would be referred to as an interface in, in what we're going to uh, discuss. Now, a fundamental quantity in forming an interface is um, if you have a solid and you somehow separate the solid uh, by a few uh, a, atomic lattice constants. So let's, let's say that this, the separation between atoms in this solid has some characteristic value A0. And uh, the question becomes, what happens when you separate the, the solid so that uh, one surface uh, is separated from the other surface by a few times this interatomic uh, lattice constant, A0? And <clears throat> basically what happens, the fundamental physics is that uh, uh, the atoms that are at, at the surface, or in this case, the atoms at the interface, uh, are going to undergo a compression or a tension simply because uh, they don't have adjacent atoms next to them that will um, uh, keep them in their official lattice sites uh, when, when they're surrounded by bulk atoms. And, and that idea gives rise to this uh, concept of excess surface energy that's, that, that's created, that, that, that happens to result every time you split apart a surface. And the question then becomes, how do you characterize this excess surface energy? And that problem was, um, was well addressed a long time ago empirically. Uh, Young, Young worried about this back in 1805. And what he realized was that if you just calculate the work that's required to produce uh, uh, an interface or a surface uh, 
the work is proportional to the, sur to the surface area that's been produced in the process of splitting the solid. So what we then say is we say that the amount of work required to uh, generate a surface with area DA is proportional to one another. And to make that proportionality into an equation, we introduce a constant gamma, which is referred to as the uh, specific uh, surface energy of the system that we're uh, worried about. So gamma is a scalar quantity. It, it does not have, uh, it's not a vector quantity. It's just a number, and it has units of energy per unit area. So typically it has uh, units of joules per meter squared or millijoules per meter squared, depending on which textbook you look at. And uh, this parameter gamma uh, is like a restoring force that resists the increase in the area. And... Uh, Numerically speaking, uh, the, the, the surface energy gamma is equal to the tension, the surface tension, uh, if you're dealing with liquid interfaces, liquid solid interfaces. Uh, so uh, these surface energies are interesting because um, they can be related back to these Hamacher constants in a very fundamental way. And it's useful to to, to have some background or some understanding of how these parameters gamma are used in, in a variety of different uh, uh, applications. And so that's basically what this lecture's, uh, the rest of this lecture is going to discuss. So it's useful to think how you might calculate surface energies for a model solid. And the idea is pretty simple. If, if you have a solid that's modeled by atoms and the atoms are in a periodic lattice, as I've indicated schematically in the left part of this diagram, then you can imagine physically separating some of those atoms from the underlying substrate, as I've indicated in the middle part of this uh, diagram, to create a surface. And then after the surface has been created, you have to relax the surface. You have to let the atoms uh, find their uh, position of minimum energy. And that might mean that the, the surface atoms could expand, uh, uh, they could contract, they could, uh, they could form a, 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 an arrangement on the surface which is completely different uh, than the arrangement the atoms have in the bulk solid. So this is technically referred to as reconstruction, surface reconstruction. <clears throat> But once the surface has been relaxed to the lowest energy position of the atoms, uh, then, then we would be in a position to compare the energy of the system after the surface is created with respect to the energy of the system before the surface, uh, ener the surface has been created. And, and that comparison would then give rise to an estimate of how much energy is required to, to uh, generate that particular surface. So surface energies can be measured in a variety of different ways. Uh, if if the, the the standard way to do it is if if your if if your material is um, uh, uh, a liquid has a liquid uh, phase to it, then you can uh, put a drop onto a surface, measure the contact angles. Uh, every technique has its limitations, and that. That measurement of contact angle is going to clearly depend on the surface roughness of the substrate on which it lies. Um, there are techniques derived from surface science where you actually measure the lattice spacing of atoms at the surface. This lattice spacing can be determined from low energy electron diffraction experiments or from scanning tunneling microscopy experiments. So these are ways that you can infer what the equilibrium separation of atoms are at the surface. That's useful information. You can actually measure the work required to cleave a crystal. There have been techniques devised to do that. That tends to be inaccurate because in the process of cleaving, you produce mechanical deformations, and those mechanical defor deformations uh, uh, aren't something that we want, would want to include in such a... Uh, a, a a measurement of a fundamental quantity like the, the surface energy gamma. Um, there are also techniques that measure uh, uh, how atoms adsorb onto the surface. You, you do this by measuring, uh, let's say, uh, the thickness of surface layers of atoms. You can do this with quartz microbalances or ellipsometry. Uh, 
Uh, it's often difficult to measure how much uh, gas is adsorbed onto a, a surface, right? And so these absorption isotherm measurements tend not to be as accurate is possibly the, the first item on this particular slide. And then lastly, there's a whole range of measurements you can do with bimetallic cantilevers, where you measure the deflection of the cantilever, uh, in particular as a function of temperature, and you use the deflection to infer how the surface energy uh, of an interface between material deposited on the cantilever uh, and the cantilever itself, how, how that uh, influences um, uh, how that changes with temperatures that then uh, can then be converted back into a measurement of interfacial surface energies. Uh, basically, high surface energies refer to strong cohesion and high melting temperatures. And uh, uh, I just get some numbers, took some numbers from the literature to, to illustrate this trend. I, I list in this table some numbers for uh, typical solids and for typical liquids that you might encounter. And of course, the idea is these, these surface energies are going to be relevant every time a tip comes into contact with a substrate. So uh, we want to try to think about how that interaction can be described in terms of these surface energies. And so we need to have a reliable uh, source of surface energies to, uh, to use in those estimates. <clears throat> the, um, the, the fundamental issue, of course, is, is whether a tip might stick to a substrate, and it's a fair question to ask, why do different materials stick to one another? You would, you would tend to want to uh, minimize that sticking in an atomic force mi microscope application. And uh, what I try to do here is I try to list a variety of different reasons that could explain why a tip uh, could could stick to a substrate based on this discussion of surface energies. And so there's uh, <clears throat> there could be a mechanical adhesion between a tip and a substrate. There could be chemical adhesion where there are chemical bonds formed between atoms and molecules on the tip with atoms and molecules on the surface. You could get a dispersive adhesion that, that's based on the van der Waals interaction between atoms and molecules in the tip, atoms and molecules in the substrate. Uh, if the tip or the substrate tends to be charged, you could get electrostatic adhesion. And then lastly, if, uh, if, if your tip or your substrate has, is made up of polymer-like molecules, it's possible that those polymer-like molecules could be entangled to produce a diffusion uh, uh, contribution to adhesion. So not all of these, uh, these uh, uh, mechanisms apply to uh, uh, typical atomic force microscope experiment, I would say based on experience that possibly the chemical adhesion and dispersive adhesion uh, uh, mechanisms are, are possibly the most important uh, in AFM measurements, but in principle all three, all five of these, these different uh, mechanisms could, be, could come into play. And it also follows from this discussion that the total surface energy between the uh, between two uh, materials that form an interface, right? That total surface energy could contain uh, contributions from each of these five different mechanisms. So, for instance, you could have uh, a dispersive uh, contribution to the uh, uh, surface energy. You could have a, 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 a coulombic contribution if there happens to be ions in this in, in the uh, that, that attract one another across the interface and so on and so forth. And a typical example, the one that's, that's quoted very often in the literature, is that the surface energy of water is basically made up of two contributions. One is due to van der Waals interaction between molecules across the interface. That contributes about 22 millijoules per square meter of, of surface energy. And uh, the hydrogen bonding between mole water molecules creates about uh, 51 millijoules per square meter of surface energy. So combined, the, the surface energy of water is on the order of 73 millijoules per square meter. And it, it, it actually is made up of two, two separate contributions. Um, the adhesion that 
that results when uh, material one comes into contact with material two is basically uh, related to the force of attraction between the unlike material in the in the in between the unlike molecules in the two materials. So if you have a tip coming into contact with a substrate, and if the material in the tip is different than the material in the substrate, you could either get high adhesion or low adhesion depending on what the molecular force of attraction between the atoms and molecules across the interface is. So if you get low adhesion, uh, right, you tend to say that that's characterized by a low surface energy. Uh, I illustrate the, the process here by just considering a, a liquid drop placed on a substrate, right? Uh, if the, if the drop, uh, adheres very tightly to the substrate, we refer to that as high adhesion. <clears throat> and basically what's happening is the molecules in the, in the drop are very strongly attracted to the molecules in the uh, substrate, right? As the adhesion decreases, um, you, you end up with a situation where the molecules in the drop are more tightly or, or more strongly attracted to each other than they are to atoms in the substrate. That produces low adhesion. And uh, that, il that, that example is, is, is illustrated on the far right of this diagram. And so <clears throat> the same thing happens when a solid tip comes into contact with a substrate, right? The adhesion could be high or low depending on how these atoms uh, interact one with respect to another. So you could get high adhesion or low adhesion uh, depending on the, on the actual chemical makeup of the tip and the substrate. There are two quantities defined in the literature which are uh, relevant to this uh, discussion. One is the work of cohesion and the other is the work of adhesion, right? Uh, so for two different solids, the case, the case of most interest in atomic force microscopy is when the two materials that come into contact, one with respect to another, are dissimilar, and that would then refer to the bottom uh, uh, half of this, of this slide. This cartoon is, uh, tries to illustrate uh, material one coming into contact with material two. <clears throat> when material one is in close contact with material two, there will be an interfacial energy that's referred to as gamma one, two. When the two materials are separated one from another, uh, the surface energy of material one is referred to as gamma one. The surface energy of material two is referred to as gamma two. And this, this interfacial energy, gamma 1, 2, is a very interesting uh, quantity because it describes how, how uh, strongly these two materials interact one with respect to another. And it's a fair question to ask if, uh, if let's say, the contact area between material 1 and material 2, if that contact area is represented by the parameter dA in this, this diagram, how the interfacial energy can be uh, measured uh, for any particular system because that interfacial energy is going to tell us something. Or actually, it's the difference uh, in the uh, uh, energies gamma 1 and gamma 2 compared to the interfacial energy gamma 1, 2 that will tell us how strongly these two surfaces want to uh, adhere to one another. Um, uh, the answer to the question, how you can estimate gamma 1, 2, uh, the answer to that question is, is that you have to go back to the Lifshitz theory for the interaction potential energy that we discussed in the previous lecture. Uh, I just worked through the arithmetic here and, and show you how knowing the surface energy of material 1, knowing the surface energy of material 2, how that allows you to estimate in a, in a crude way just by scaling uh, what this interfacial surface energy gamma 1, 2 is. And uh, this relies on the expression for uh, the Hamacher constant that, um, uh, that's provided uh, using the Lifshitz formulation. Uh, and it also uh, requires you to understand that the surface energies are proportional to the Hamacher constants uh, for flat planes. Uh, we'll discuss that in lecture three, but I need that result here to, uh, to, to work through this, uh, this analysis. So 
Uh, the answer that you typically find in, in all the textbooks is that this interfacial uh, surface energy gamma 1, 2, it's roughly equal to twice times the square root of gamma 1, gamma 2. The basis for that uh, is, is this derivation that I've got sketched out in this particular slide. So, uh, to end this lecture, um, and you say, why is this interesting? Why, are this, why is this important? Well, it's interesting, it's important within the context of atomic force microscopy because every time the tip comes into contact with a substrate, you are actually forming an interface between the material that comprises the tip and the material that comprises the substrate. There are many ways to describe that interface, and what I've tried to do in this particular lecture is emphasize to you that one, one particularly useful way to describe that interface is through this concept of surface energies. And uh, we'll follow up a little bit more on this discussion in the next lecture where we'll show how Hamacher constants are, are related to surface energies in a, in a reasonably straightforward way. So you have to think about this. This is probably more uh, familiar to those of you with a strong background in chemistry than it is uh, to those of you that may have a, a background, let's say, in biology or physics. Uh, this surface energy uh, concept tends to derive more from the chemistry way of thinking of things uh, than from the physics or biology. So we'll see you in the next lecture, and we'll continue this discussion at that point.